So in this video, I want to give you a second example how we can use window functions. Now let's say we wanted to compare the close price with today's open price. So we want to see the difference between the close and open price from yesterday and today because overnight the prices can change. And therefore we would have to pull let the last day's closing value into the current row to actually produce the the difference between the two. And that we can do with a window function. Now, as we do not want to have any partitioning, because we actually want to look at all the rows in our data frame, we can even leave the partition by empty. So we get all of the rows of the data frame in a single group. And then we can basically order by date descending, uh, the ascending, so using this window, we will get one large group having all this, all its values, all the rows ordered by date in, a, in an ascending way. Now, in this case, we don't want to use the row number function, but we want to use the lag function. So here's the lag function and here's the short documentation returns the value that is offset rows before the current row and here offset is a number so it's a parameter to the function and we wanted to have the row directly before the current row and therefore our offset will be have we have to set our offset to one and the default if there and then there is a default value if there's no row which is offset of one rows before the current row meaning if we are in the first row for, uh, so in the row for the first data point we won't have an earlier data point and if that's the case we cannot find a row that's before the current row and then we will apply the default value and we will use simply zero for that so that's a window function so we we need to call lag and this takes parameters now over our window and as we saw before the first argument to the lag function is the column name or an column a column expression so for example we wanted to have the column close price of the previous row. We want to pull this one into the current row. So we use the F close. The offset should be one row and the default value should be a double of zero. That's what we're going to do over the window. And we're not going to call it rank, but rather we call it adjacent adjacent close price or previous day close close price so that will be the column name of our new column so just to wrap this up we are going to add a new column previous day close which will take the one rows before close price and pull it into the current row if there is no previous row we take the value zero and that we do over the window so we have no grouping and the all of the rows are ordered by date so if we take one row before the current row it will be the row of the previous day and now we don't want to filter we just want to see the result so let me execute this one to show you what's happening so basically we are maintaining all of the rows and all of the columns and we're simply adding a new column while this column contains the close price for the previous day. And as we can see here, for the first day, we don't have a previous row. So the previous day close price is zero. For the 15th of December, 1980, we see the previous day close price of 0.51, which is the close price of the previous day. And yeah, I mean, the, the assignment specification means that we take always the last value we have. So here we can see that we have a weekend in between, but that doesn't matter. We wanted to check the difference between the close price of the previous day and the open price of the current day. And that's what we're going to do here now. Now we can use um, a new column. So we could add a new column with column, for example, and say diff pref close so that would be the difference to the previous day's close price. And we say this should be the F 
and then open. So today's open price minus column previous day close, which will give us the difference between the two values. And now, yeah, let's add this escape character here and let's have a look if this works actually. So one more thing I wanted to show you until this completes on the window, we can also sp specify rows, a uh, range between, no rows between. So we can basically add an entire <coughs> frame. So it's not only a, a single row or a partitioning or an order, but we can also um, expand the the window to a particular number of rows. And that's how we can create rolling windows. So for, if we wanted to calculate a rolling average over various times, we can use this property on the window. And yeah, here we have seen, here we can see the result of our previous day close. So in this case, it yeah, it doesn't make sense too much because we have assumed it to be zero. So we could add a rule which says if the if it if there's no previous day close price, we should return null here, which would be much better way of representing that there is no valid value. And that's what you can do in the assignment. Down here we can see that today's open price was actually lower than yesterday's close price. And let's check this one. So today's open price on the 12th, uh, 15th of December is 0.48. And the closing price on 12th of December is 0.51. And that's what represented here in the diff previous day close price.